You ever wonder what's going on when you think, feel, or just exist? I know I do. It's one of those questions that seems so basic, but when you really stop to think about it, it gets pretty complicated. The strange thing is, we go through our daily lives barely noticing how little we understand about what it means to be conscious. That's something I was reminded of not too long ago. I was sitting with Dulos Theos, my friend, at a local coffee shop. We were talking about everything and nothing, the usual stuff. How his work was going, the weather, plans for the weekend. Nothing profound, just small talk. We've known each other for years and I always thought we shared a similar worldview. Practical, logical, grounded. But then, as if out of nowhere, he said something that completely shifted my perspective. Consciousness is just brain activity, he said. It's all just chemicals and electrical signals, nothing more to it. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? Our brain controls everything, our thoughts, our feelings, our actions. It's all connected, I said, trying to keep up with the conversation. We spend so much time just going about our lives, assuming that our awareness is simply a product of our biology. But what if it's more than that? What if there's something deeper at play? I started to ask myself, is our consciousness really just a byproduct of the brain's electrical activity, or is it something else entirely? Could our awareness be a force beyond what science can currently explain? And as I sat there, listening to Dulos talk about how consciousness is just chemical reactions, I realized how much of the world we take for granted. What if the things we think we know about life, the universe and ourselves are only a fraction of the truth? Dulos, for all his logic, had unknowingly opened a door I didn't even know existed. What if our awareness isn't limited to just our bodies? What if consciousness has an even greater role in shaping the world around us? And what does this mean for how we understand everything from our emotions to the very fabric of reality itself? As I sat there, I realized that this simple conversation had planted a seed. The question of consciousness had become more than just an academic curiosity. It was something I had to explore, something that had the potential to change the way I understood the world. The mysteries of existence had become more pressing, more immediate, and I knew I couldn't just ignore them. It was a moment of clarity in a sea of uncertainty. Because in that moment, I realized something that would stay with me. The question of what consciousness really is wasn't just about understanding the mind, it was about understanding everything, how we see the world, how we interact with it, and even how we define reality itself. That was when I decided to dig deeper. I had to. I had to know what consciousness truly is. So naturally I started diving into it. I mean, how could I not? The idea that consciousness might just be a byproduct of brain chemicals felt too simple, too dismissive of the vastness of human experience. But as I began researching, I discovered a complex web of ideas that seemed to challenge everything I thought I knew. Let's start with integrated information theory. It's a fascinating theory and one that immediately caught my attention. According to integrated information theory, consciousness arises from the integration of information within the brain. It's not just random brain activity, no, it's about how complex and interconnected the parts of the brain are. The theory suggests that consciousness is a result of this complexity. The more connected the system, the more conscious it becomes. Essentially, the brain is like a highly sophisticated network. It's not just a collection of neurons firing, it's a deeply interwoven system that gives rise to our sense of self. When I first encountered this theory, it felt like a piece of the puzzle fell into place. If consciousness is about the way information is integrated, then I wasn't just some passive observer in the universe. No, I was a part of a much larger, more complex system. This new perspective made me see myself differently, as if I were not just thinking, but contributing to the network of existence. But then there's panpsychism, a theory that really blew my mind. 
Imagine this, consciousness is not just confined to human beings, it's not even just confined to animals. What if consciousness exists in everything, every particle, every rock, every tree, even the air around us? Panpsychism suggests that everything, in some way, is conscious. Even if it's just a flicker of awareness, everything is part of this vast web of consciousness. Can you imagine that? What if this table I'm sitting at right now has a kind of awareness? It's a wild idea, but it makes you rethink everything you've ever known about life. Could it be that everything around us, every object, every molecule, has some form of consciousness? How does that change the way we interact with the world? And what about us? Could we be part of a much larger, much older consciousness that spans the entire universe? Then there's dualism, the theory that consciousness exists separately from the body. According to dualism, the mind and body are distinct and consciousness exists independently of the brain. This idea feels almost ancient, doesn't it? It's the belief that our mind, our soul, is something beyond the physical body. It's not just a product of biology, it's something separate, something eternal. The more I explored these ideas, the more I realized that they weren't just abstract theories. They were changing the way I viewed my own consciousness. Was I just a product of my brain's electrical activity? Or was there something more, something beyond the material world? And what if these ideas could help explain not just my own experience of reality, but the very nature of existence itself? Each of these theories challenged my initial understanding of consciousness. But more than that, they made me ask a bigger question. If consciousness is something more than just brain activity, what role does it play in our understanding of the universe? Could it be the key to unlocking deeper truths about reality? Could consciousness itself be what connects us to everything else? These questions felt urgent, as if I had stumbled upon something that could change everything I thought I knew. So, I kept digging, trying to understand what consciousness truly was. But as I kept searching, I realized one thing. The more I learned, the more I realized how much there was still to discover. Here's where things start to get really interesting. You might be wondering, okay, this all sounds fascinating, but how does it tie into the bigger picture? How does it change the way we think about reality itself? Well, let me tell you, when I started diving into quantum mechanics, everything I thought I knew was turned upside down. I stumbled across the double slit experiment and let me tell you, it completely shifted my perspective. The double slit experiment is one of the most famous experiments in quantum physics. Scientists shot particles through a barrier with two slits and when the particles weren't being observed, they behaved like waves spreading out existing in multiple places at once. But here's the twist. As soon as someone observed the particles, they acted like solid particles. They behaved differently just by being watched. At first, I couldn't wrap my head around it. Why would the particles behave differently depending on whether or not they were observed? It was as if the universe itself was waiting for someone to notice it. It was as if the act of observation was shaping the very outcome of reality itself. And that got me thinking, could consciousness, our awareness, actually shape reality? Is the universe somehow responding to our minds or even created by them? The more I thought about it, the more the idea began to take shape. What if the universe is not something separate from us but instead something intimately connected to our consciousness. What if our awareness doesn't just observe reality, but actively participates in its creation? Think about that for a second. What if everything around you, the room you're in, the people you're with, the very screen you're looking at, what if all of it is somehow dependent on your perception, your awareness? If that's true, then we're not just passive observers of reality. We're active participants in creating it. That thought is both thrilling and terrifying, isn't it? The idea that our minds are not just in the world, they are of the world, shaping it with every thought, every observation. And that's when I realized something profound. 
If consciousness can shape reality itself, then our understanding of consciousness has the power to change the very fabric of existence. We're not just living in a world that exists independently of us, we're living in a world that responds to our awareness. It's a mind-bending concept, but one that holds incredible implications for how we see ourselves and the universe around us. So, if consciousness has this kind of power, then what does that mean for us? Are we the creators of the world we experience? Or are we just observers in a universe we don't fully understand? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that the question of consciousness was no longer just an academic exercise. It was the key to understanding everything, the nature of reality, the universe, and our place within it. So, after all that thinking, what do we take from this? Maybe the truth is, we'll never fully understand what consciousness really is. Maybe it's not something that can be neatly explained by science or philosophy or any one theory. We might never know for certain whether it's a biological process, a universal force, or something in between, and that's okay. Because in the end, it's not about having all the answers, it's about the questions we ask and the way they shape the way we live our lives. For me, understanding consciousness has become less about solving a puzzle and more about embracing the mystery of existence. It's a reminder of how small we are in the grand scheme of things. When I think about consciousness now, it's not just an abstract concept, it's a deeply personal journey, a reflection of how we make sense of the world, how we connect with others, and how we experience the beauty and wonder of being alive, and maybe, just maybe, consciousness is the key to understanding more than just ourselves. What if our awareness is what connects us to something much bigger, something beyond our comprehension? What if, in some strange way, the universe itself is shaped by our collective consciousness? What if we are not just passive observers, but active participants in creating reality itself? That thought is humbling. It makes you realize how little we truly know and yet, how much we still have to discover. We're all just part of something bigger, something we can't even begin to fully grasp. But maybe that's okay. Maybe the mystery itself is what makes life so fascinating. It's the not knowing, the questioning, that makes us human. So here's the question I want to leave you with. What role do you think your consciousness plays in your life and in the universe? Is it just a product of your brain or is there something more, something deeper, something more profound? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let's keep this conversation going in the comments and together let's keep exploring the most profound question we'll ever ask. What does it truly mean to be conscious?